Hey, can I have a hundred dollar bill? <laughs> I'd like to see Independence Hall since we didn't get to see it when we were there. Welcome to another episode of Our Haunted Travels with your hosts, Sean and Marianne Glenn. <laughs> well, hello, pair peeps, and welcome to another episode of Our Haunted Travels. I am your host, Sean Donnelly. And I'm your co-host, Marianne Donnelly. That's right. When we visited Independence Hall, we weren't able to get inside and see it. We sure weren't. We made the mistake of visiting Philadelphia too close to the July 4th, and all the tickets were sold out. <laughs> Yeah, they only have so many spots available in a day, and uh, we didn't make it. Yeah, we didn't make it. We did make it to the Liberty Bell, but not Independence Hall. What's across the thing? So we got to look at it. Closest we got was looking at it and taking pictures. We couldn't yeah. go inside. Yeah. So you know what that means? We got to go back to Philadelphia. We got to go back to Philadelphia. Not a problem. No. A lot of cool stuff in Philadelphia. Yeah, we can go back to Mutter Museum. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See the great site of Benjamin Franklin and. Yeah. That church, well, the name of that church with the graves inside of it and all, all, yeah. all yeah. kinds there of stuff. Yeah, there was pretty cool stuff in Philadelphia. There was stuff we didn't catch when we were in Philadelphia that was up farther north. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So. so, yeah, we visited Philadelphia on July 2nd of 2015. And that was awful close to the holiday. <laughs> that so it was. We actually decided well, we were actually going to stay and try to catch the fourth in Philadelphia, which would have been awesome. But when we went downtown and we saw some of the protests <laughs> and stuff going on, we're like, we're, head, we're heading out of out of Dodge for yeah. that. So, yeah, we didn't stay for the fourth. Right. But today we are talking about Panic D number one three six five, and that is Independence Hall, located at five hundred and twenty. Chestnut Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And it says unknown, but I need to change that. It is open to the public, but you have to buy tickets to go inside. Actually, the tickets are free. You oh, just, they are free. That's you why. just have okay. to get them. <laughs> okay. Which would explain why it's like first come, first serve type. Thing that is correct. To get in there and visit inside. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, you have to get up a little bit earlier in the morning. Oh, I didn't know. Now I do. <laughs> okay, so before we move any further, let's cover some of the history. So we'll play a little video. All right. All right, we'll be right back. Independence Hall was designed in the Georgian style, displaying a sense of proportion, balance, and symmetry. It was master builder Edmund Woolley who drew up the original designs for the building. The plan included a 105-foot long main block two covered arcades, and two 50-foot-long wing buildings. The Speaker of the Assembly, Andrew Hamilton, oversaw the construction, which began in 1732. The building, without the tower, was completed in 1748, although while parts of the building were still being built, the Pennsylvania Assembly began meeting in the building by 1735. It has, however, changed frequently since its initial construction. Changes include the addition of a tower and steeple to Independence Hall in the mid-18th century, the demolition and replacement of original wing buildings, the construction and then later removal of wooden sheds, as well as removal and later replacement of the steeple. The wing buildings served as an office space and living quarters for the doorkeeper, and the wooden sheds were originally adjoining these wing buildings on the east and west ends of the complex. During the American Revolution, these sheds were used for ammunition storage. It is also possible that the sheds housed native peoples when they visited the provincial government for treaty negotiations. The wooden sheds were removed sometime after 1787 to make way for City Hall and the County Courthouse. Today, the exterior of the Independence Hall retains much of its 18th century appearance. The north facade features marble keystones above each window, a carved wooden cornice, and a wooden balustrade stretching between the chimneys on the roof. 
It also has a Venetian or Palladian window that graces the south facade. It was between 1750 and 1756 that a masonry tower with a wooden steeple was added to the south side of the building. A bell was ordered for this steeple in 1751, and in 1753, that bell was recast into the one we now call the Liberty Bell. This addition, however, provided Independence Hall with a grand new staircase and a walnut handrail that led to the second floor. Benjamin Franklin would frequently use this to get to his office on the second floor when he was in office from 1785 to 1788. The stairs for this area are classified as open newel, meaning they have a turnaround with a large light well. They're also open string because their profile of the risers and treads are visible. There is also elaborate scroll carved friezes at each of the stair landings and scroll and leaf brackets on the sides of the steps. Carver Samuel Harding created much of the ornamentation of the central hall. Some of the original woodwork survives even still today. Much of his design of the interior reinforced that idea of proportion and symmetry that was promoted through Georgian architecture. Fitting with this idea, one can also see that there are large detailed masks adorning the interior, which are located on the north and east walls of the central hall. Master builder Edmund Woolley commissioned carpenter Samuel Harding to create these wood carvings in the central hall and tower stair hall, and his work remains there yet today. The wooden steeple, unfortunately, had rotted and weakened to dangerous extent by 1773. It was removed in 1781 and had the brick tower covered with a hipped roof. In 1812, the city and county of Philadelphia replaced the wing buildings with modern office buildings. These were designed by architect Robert Mills. The new buildings were used for city administration and record storage. State government considered tearing down the State House, or Independence Hall, at this time. However, the city brought the buildings and land from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania in 1818 for $70,000. After Revolutionary War hero Marquis de Lafayette visited the building in 1824, public sentiment advocated for the restoration of the building to its 1776 appearance. Thus, in 1828, the city hired architect William Strickland to restore the original steeple. Strickland's steeple did, however, deviate from the original 1776 steeple design through his incorporation of a clock and additional ornamentation. The city of Philadelphia removed the assembly room's original paneling sometime in the early 19th century. This move was not appreciated by the public, and so, in 1831, architect John Haviland was hired to restore the room where the Declaration of Independence and U.S. Constitution were both signed. Haviland's work, which included some inaccuracies, was later removed by the National Park Service. Between 1896 and 1898, the city implemented a program to restore Independence Square to its original appearance as it was during the American Revolution. As part of that program, the Mills buildings were replaced by wings and arcades resembling those of the 18th century. Today, visitors who visit Independence Hall will see the exteriors of the building that look much as they did to visitors back in 1898. All right, so some, again, great history. <laughs> I'll quit giving you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank it you for me. complimenting you or quit complimenting. Quit complimenting me. Right, it makes me. Compliment. It makes me. Gives you a complex. Creepy. It gives me a creepy feel. It's like, what does he want now? <laughs> does he want food? So yeah, we didn't get a chance to go inside. I did when I was like in seventh grade. So that was way back. So maybe it was eighth grade. I don't know. We took a trip to Philadelphia. And I get to go inside. 
and it's very cool. So we do have to go back. So Definitely you can, have to. You were inside. I was not inside. Yeah, especially with the National Treasure movie being there and all that stuff to go inside there. And yeah, considering uh, we went uh, into some of the areas where National Treasure Two uh, was filmed at uh, Mount Vernon in some of the secret areas. Um, it'd be kind of cool to see if they have a specific tour or an area where they say, you know, this part is the yeah. one that, you know. Yeah. But actually, in reality, it would just really be cool that we would go in there and I would get to see where the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence were signed. Yeah, yeah. That would be really super awesome. It is kind of uh, surreal. And to think that they almost tore it down. Because yeah. they were gonna, they were gonna get rid of it, but then they ended up buying it, and it's crazy. Yeah, we almost didn't, almost didn't have it, almost and didn't have it. yeah. So like our opener, it is on the back of a hundred dollar bill. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and I, and I also that like the whole steeple, that it wasn't originally part of it. It just seems so iconic that it should be there. Just and here's another that thing wasn't. that's kind of interesting about Independence Hall is. The Henry Ford Museum mm -hmm. is actually designed after That's Independence true. Hall. So we were kind of like in it, but not. <laughs> <laughs> not. <laughs> not. No, no. But yeah, but you're right. It was actually modeled after that. It's almost the same as the Independence Hall, which is neat. Yeah. 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 He did have a love of architecture. Yeah, he did. And a lot of money. All right, so let's just talk a little bit about our. our trip to Philadelphia as far as personal experiences we stayed outside of Philadelphia mm -hmm. and drove in and found a parking deck yep. and when we come up out of the parking deck there was this big festival going on <laughs> yeah, there was a sea of people yeah. and chairs and barricades that they were putting up to kind of corral people to the areas they wanted them to be in just so many people insane. So our plans were to kind of walk around the historical Philadelphia area for the day <clears throat> and and then head back to the hotel and um we tried to get those tickets we didn't get tickets to get inside the independence hall but we did get to see the liberty bell mm -hmm. and while we were there in line which took forever it did. just to see the bell and pose in front of it yeah it's um, look go look go yeah, <laughs> look snap go okay. which i'll put the picture of us in front of the liberty bell right here um, but as we were coming out of the Liberty Belt, right across the thing, there was a protest going on. Yeah, it started organizing and people protesting, and here come the police, and I'm, yeah. Yeah, I don't it's really remember on. what the protest was about, but it was either. something that was happening in 2015. I don't really remember, but, I, I don't it, but it was enough to, for us to say, okay, we're... Okay. we're Time to leave. We're going to head out of, out of town. Yeah, so we did go up and see the, uh, the one building where... Um, Jefferson actually wrote the Declaration of Independence. Mm -hmm. We saw that. We went to Betsy Ross' house, and we went to um, the it's Christ Church, I mm -hmm. believe, and then Christ Church Cemetery, where Benjamin Franklin is, and other signers of the Declaration um, are buried there too. So we had a good day. It was it was fun. Yeah, we had a busy busy. We day. just kept moving. That's the yeah. thing when we go to these big cities, we just keep on moving. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. don't, it was we don't disappointing. get stagnant in too many places. It was disappointing we didn't get into Independence Hall, but at least we got to see it. Yeah, but we'll go back. But we will go back. Absolutely. And we will go in. Okay, so do you have uh, anything else you would like to add for this location? Nope, I think we're good. No? Um, do you have a link? Uh, we did Ghost Stories and Folklore. I forgot to mention that before, so I'll put a link to that right here. Bing! You can find out the paranormal claims and uh, some of the reportings. So, all right. Hey, I guess we'll wrap it up. All right. Okay. Until next time. Thanks for watching. And happy hunting. Let us know if you like this video by hitting that thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to see more videos from us in the future, support our channel by hitting that subscribe button and dinging that bell so you get notified the next time there's a video from Panic D Video. Thanks for watching. Happy hunting.